And he looked me straight in the eye and he said, now we don't have to worry about promotion. We're going to go viral. Uh, that is a bad idea. That is a bad strategy. The fifth hat in the clarity matrix in the team that you need for your podcast is promotion. You want someone who knows what they're doing. A, a strategy of just hitting it big or Apple promoting you or that type of thing um, never works. I've had clients promoted by Apple. Sometimes we pushed for it. Sometimes it happened, but it's not a strategy that you want to play into. And even those elements by themselves, promotion is still part of the process. And for both of these clients, they have someone who specifically wears the promotion hat. Hey, this is Paul Colligan, and this is the Team Clarity Matrix. This is a six-part process that explains the six members of a podcast team. Uh, this is a tool that we use with all of our clients to help them understand exactly what it is that they need to do to put together the team. No podcast is an island. The last five episodes, we chatted about some of the other hats that people have to wear. Today, we're chatting about the hat of promotion. So we'll start with a couple of things. Number one, we're going to start with the lie of promotion and the mindset scar card. And this is really, really important. Um, there is this concept that I have to get my episode out today and I have to get all of my promotion today and I have to get all of my audience members today because the next day we might be promoting something else or we might be doing something else. There's this whole idea that now, 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 over and over and over again. And you've probably watched podcasts that do this. I, you know, you've subscribed to the show and automatically comes to your device. But for some reason, every week they, they feel the need to email you that the podcast is out. That's because they don't have a full understanding of, of promotion. But I want to go even back a step further. One of the things we have internally is our mindset scar card, the things you got to think, the, the way you got to kind of see the podcasting world to do well. And one of the big things there is the simple fact that you want to produce assets, not episodes. If you produce something for Tuesday, July 13th, 2017, one day at a time. If you produce an asset that was just as good on that day as it was five years ago, as it will be five years from today, you're in an entirely different place. If you produce assets, if you produce things that don't need immediate promotion, don't need specific promotion, don't deal with what's happening in the news exactly right now, you'll find yourself that many ways and many times and in many places, assets actually promote themselves. We'll chat about that a little bit, but I want to chat with that said and done, to the bigger picture of promotion. The bigger picture of promotion. There are three S's, uh, the letter S in the world of promotion. There's scale, there's strategy, and there's stats. And the person who puts on the hat, the person who is the team member for your podcast in the promotional world needs to understand scale, needs to understand strategy, and needs to understand stats. Scale, number one, the first question you need to ask, and this is huge, is the juice worth the squeeze? I've had people who've looked at me and said, oh, you know, we need to have a strategy for podcast, you know, I'm sorry, a strategy for social platform X. The fact of the matter is their audience isn't on social platform X. They're paying customers. The people who write the checks are not on social platform X. And so what they do is they spend a lot of time working in a place where the juice isn't worth the squeeze and then they don't see the results they're looking for and then they get frustrated and they blame it on podcasting. No, it's the promotion point. And really a subset of that in the world of scale is do you actually know where your audience actually is? Um, is your audience on that platform? Is your audience on any social platform? Is your audience given up on social platforms? Uh, when you understand where your audience is, then you know the process, you know how to get to them and you go from there. Uh, does anything you do reach enough people to be worth it in the world of promotion? Does anything you do, can anything you do, is there anything you want to do that reaches enough people to actually be worth it? You want to walk through that process. Is it worth it or not? You know, you could spend 80 hours, 100 hours a week promoting a podcast. You could have a whole flock of people promoting the podcast. But if you don't understand where your audience is, what is they're looking for, where they're hanging out, you know, you're not thinking scale and it's not going to do well. Um, are you promoting places your audience isn't sort of a subset of that, but important speak to the assets of the episode and not episode seven. You know, I mentioned here at the beginning of this, this was part five of a six part series. This is an asset that people will be using the year we recorded this and people will be using in future years. And then the last question you want to ask yourself is, is this a robotic process or is this different every week? 
Uh, this is a big picture question. It, will this work robotically? Can you do something that sets like clockwork or do you need to massage and touch your audience in the way that they're deserving of? Again, it's a question of juice worth the squeeze. So scale, what do you want to do? Where are they? Is it going to be worth it? Are there any places you could cut back? Is there any places you could do more of? That's scale. Strategy. What's the difference, Paul, between scale and strategy? Let's chat to that. Um, strategy is the bigger picture of the implementation of scale. Really, should you be building your audience in conjunction with your podcast? Should you be building your audience before you build your podcast? Should you be building the audience after you build the podcast? These types of questions are where you want to go when you're figuring out scale versus strategy. And then a question for you, when you got a listener, what's the first thing do you want? Do you want a new subscriber first? Do you want a new email address first? Do you want a new phone number first? Do you want a new social follower first? Um, what do you want first and then build for that? Does the strategy build for that? I've got people who are very schizophrenic. I've, I've seen people who are very schizophrenic in their promotion of their podcast. And they go, sign up for my website here and follow me on social here and leave a review here and give me your phone number here and do this. And it's like inundated with commands. What do you want first? And then go for that and promote that. And then lastly, the question you really want to ask in strategy is do you want to, comma, can you, comma, should you pay for new subscribers. There are ways to buy subscribers, real subscribers. I'm not talking click farms offshore, that type of thing. Uh, there are ways to, to buy subscribers. It's going to cost you, but if the profit model is there, that might make a lot of sense. Of course, if the profit model isn't there, it makes a lot of sense to run away from it. But there we go. Strategy. Should you be building your audience in conjunction with before, after your podcast? What do you want first? And then finally, do you want to, can you, should you pay for new subscribers? Okay, then the stats. Um, promotion is a numbers game. When you promote your podcast, you want to know whether or not it's working. Oh, we promoted it everywhere. Well, did it work? We, you know, splattered LinkedIn with a promotion for our podcast. Did it work? I don't care what you did. I care if it worked. And that's the third S in all of this, the stats. First question is, what can you track? Hey guys, my new podcast episode's out. Well, you can't really track a click there. Um, what do you do? If you want to put the link there, then you're promoting to new people, your subscribers. What can you track? What should you track? One interesting thing to track is how many do we get without promotion? How many do we get with promotion? I had a major marketer, one of our clients, um, big on email, a, a master of email. We published the podcast and then we realized that he forgot to promote it by email. And what was funny was when we did the promotion by email, it was a tiny, tiny delta of new listeners because most of them who were subscribers were already on the email list and they'd subscribed previously. They'd subscribed a while ago. So what can you track? What should you track? What should you ignore? There are a lot of stats. There are a lot of numbers out there. Is there anything that's just noise? And then finally, uh, what do you compare it to what you're tracking to? You know, it's funny, you know, oh, we didn't get a thousand downloads. Comes from somebody who's happy if eight people show up for a presentation. You know, what are you comparing the numbers to? You know, we only got 80% consumption compared to what? So as you look at the stats, what does the number, what are you looking for? Was that a number that you pulled out of your, out of thin air? Is that a number that someone else is doing? You know, one good listener um, who makes the one good purchase in the podcast might be entirely with it. So promotion is not an issue of setting things up robotically. So promotion is not an episode of a script or things that go out or at the flip side of that, having a full staff of people who just pound the internet with results as soon as your podcast comes out. It's an issue of scale. What do you do that works? Where does it work the best? It's an issue of strategy. What are you trying to accomplish? That's an issue of stats. At the end, um, do the numbers make sense? Does this make it worth it? There we go. That is promotion and podcasting. On the operations side of thing, we'll hit that at the next episode and we'll go from there. We do have one comment here. If anybody else is watching or anybody else who is watching, if you want to make a comment, uh, go ahead. We'll go ahead and answer that. Um, Jim says here, I'm a full-time podcaster since 2012, started in five, having over 800, 1800 episodes that are mostly evergreen has served me well. Yep. 
1,800 episodes, 1,800 different places for them to enter into Jim's podcast, 1,800 places for Jim to be found in all the search engines across all the podcasts. The numbers game that Jim is playing is absolutely fantastic. Thank you for that comment live on Facebook. If you're watching it on Facebook, we do monitor the results, um, not as not as hard line when we're live here, but um, go ahead and leave a comment there. If you're listening on the podcast, all the usual ways, thepodcastreport.com forward slash Apple, forward slash Spotify, forward slash Pandora, wherever you listen. And of course, thepodcastreport.com forward slash Facebook, forward slash Twitter, forward slash Instagram, if you want to interact with us socially. Thank you so much. Next time, we will take a look at operations and we'll close it all up. Thanks for listening. Chat with you soon. Bye.